Flawless Like Me is the long-awaited debut album from the underground legendary rapper Lucky Who. With this album, it seems like he may be getting not so underground anymore. I've personally been a fan of Lucky since early 2019, around the time when Free Wave 3 dropped. That wasn't the first project I heard from him though. The first project I heard from him was Watch My Back. Gotta, as always, whenever I do a Lucky review, I gotta give a big shout out to my boy Ricky, who put me on to Lucky in the first place. Always gotta thank him for that, because at this point, Lucky is one of my favorite artists. From the time that I first got into him to now, I've seen this guy blow up so much. The level of his popularity has increased so much, it actually kind of surprises me, because, I mean, I first got into this guy when I was in a pretty rough time in my life, and Free Wave 3 in particular, that album hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was just playing that album on repeat for like my entire last year of high school. It was just getting me through it. It was that hitting me in the soul and just carrying me through life kind of music. So why Watching him gain so much popularity over the past few years, it's been a really cool thing to witness. But I mean, by the time I came in to the Lucky Hype, even though it was almost four years ago now, it was still probably about six years after his debut album, Alternative Trap. So he's been in the game for about a decade now, a long ass time. And even when he was totally unheard of, even when he went by the name Lucky X, that was a whole different era, he was still doing things that now you can look back on and be like, holy fuck, that's super legendary. I mean, he was making songs with FKA Twigs, Danny Brown, Chance the Rapper. His style of music and the way he rapped back then is completely different. If you go back to it as someone who's a fan of his newer stuff, you, you'll be pretty blown away by just how drastically he shifted his sound. But personally, I just think it's absolutely cool as hell, especially because, like I said, I started liking Lucky with Free Wave 3 and Watch My Back. And Watch My Back is kind of the project where now you can kind of see it as a full turning point for Lucky's sound, because even though uh, albums like X had some songs that are kind of reminiscent of the style that he has gone into, Watch My Back is really the first full project that just has this trippy, psychedelic cloud rap sound with Lucky completely changing the way he raps and writes and puts an album together. So when I first got into Lucky, even though that was the sound that got me into him, most of his music that I went back to when I went and listened to his back catalog was actually that old school style of his. So when I was first becoming a Lucky fan, I was still kind of getting that deep immersion into his early sound so that as I have been a Lucky fan over the years and watching him go deeper and deeper down the path he's currently on, it has just been a really awesome evolution to watch. One of the most unique in modern hip hop. I really don't know any other artists who started off making like Mac Miller, Chance the Rapper sounding music and then ending up in a place now where I don't think there's anybody's music you can directly compare him to. I think his music is very unique, but obviously now he's more in the lane of guys like Future, Playboy Cardi, Juice World, etc, etc. Just a very, very different style of music from what he was originally making. So I know this is a pretty long intro for this review, but Lucky has just had such an incredible and interesting career. I haven't even done full justice to it, of course, but I did just want to go over it because I feel like with this here being his official final debut album that he's been teasing for three or four years now, I feel like if you want to fully appreciate what this moment means to Lucky fans, why we are going so crazy about it, if you're not a huge Lucky fan yourself, it is because it is this culmination of a decade's worth of hard work and grinding and just staying true to himself in the underground. He never sold out. Not only did he never sell out in terms of his sound, but even just how he moves in the industry. He's never been a clout chaser. He never loaded his mixtapes with features. In fact, out of curiosity, I went back to check out of all his mixtapes, which I mean, in today's era are basically albums, even though this here is technically his debut studio album, but on all his mixtapes, he has no rap features except on one, and that's X. Some of his EPs also have some features, but he has eight or nine or more mixtapes at this point, only one of them has features. Pretty much his entire career, he's just been doing it himself. Him and his producers, of course, got a shout out, you know, Brent Rambo, 16 year old, Chase the Money, so many more who have helped Lucky's music be so special over the years, but you know what I mean. In terms of as a rapper, he hasn't relied on big features, he hasn't relied on other people carrying him. He's built his fan base all by himself. If you're a Lucky fan, you're a fan of Lucky. He's not someone like French Montana where maybe you could argue if it weren't for features, yeah, would anybody have cared about them in the first place? Yeah, I'm not sure. So three years in the making, the culmination of a decade of rapping, how did Flawless Like Me turn out? Well, 
in one massive lucky fans entirely bias opinion entirely subjective bias opinion I think this album is fucking amazing and it's probably my favorite thing that's come out this year. We've had a lot of amazing music this year. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Don FM, recently Pierre Bourne's new album, Good Movie, has been one of my personal favorites, but I don't know. This album right here, it's not even a week old yet, so maybe I shouldn't go making bold proclamations, but yeah, this is probably gonna end up being my favorite album of the year. Just after his mixtape Wake Up Lucky was my favorite project of the year last year, okay? I'm a big Lucky fan. I think what the guy is doing is super crazy unique. I love the sound of his music, and most of all, as I've spoken about in all my other Lucky videos, his lyrics, I just find them so damn haunting, relatable, quotable. They pierce my soul in a million different ways. They make me feel super deep personal emotions that most other music will never ever get out of me. What I'm pretty much saying is there was kind of a 0% chance that I wasn't gonna love this album, but that being said, the product we do have, I just think that it is basically the best thing Lucky could have done. It is a clear step forward, in my opinion, in terms of his personal progression as an artist, and it really does feel like a statement-level project. Like, it feels appropriate that this is his debut album. Like I said earlier, all his mixtapes basically already feel like albums, so going into this, I was kind of thinking, yeah, it's just gonna feel like all his other mixtapes. To be fair to him, really doesn't. It does have its own unique kind of epic air of importance around it. It just feels like he has a higher stature now. You can feel it exuding from the music. A lot of that, and one of my main points on why I find this album so interesting in the first place, is that Lucky himself, his confidence on this album, is unrivaled to anything that he's had in any of his past projects. If you're a big Lucky fan, or even if you're just familiar with his music, you'll know that a lot of his stuff is extremely depressing, sad, focuses on him fighting his trauma, his demons, focuses on him dealing with heartbreak, drug addiction. It's very dark, dark, bleak music that he's making a lot of the time. Now, one of the reasons I love him also is that he manages to make songs that are simultaneously bleak and beautiful, bleak and hype, like, even though there is that sadness at the core of his music. His songs aren't totally drenched in that sadness. Oftentimes in the past, he's been able to break free from that sadness, even though it's still there, it's not pinning him down. But the difference I feel on this album, this is the first time where it really feels like on a lot of these tracks, the sadness just isn't there at all. It's just pure confidence. He's fully comfortable with himself. He's embraced his role in the rap game. He knows who he is. He doesn't care how anybody feels. His trauma is still there, which he talks about a lot on this album, but he's gotten way better at handling it. And that's honestly extremely inspiring, isn't it? Somebody who's had a lot of trouble over the years with knowing their own value, their own self-worth, specifically as an artist and as a rapper. There's actually a super interesting line on this project. I'm pretty sure it's on the song Drought Ski, where Lucky says, I miss Juice, he knew it first when I was still doubting me, basically saying that Juice World knew that he was as amazing of a rapper as he is before he even knew it from himself, and Juice World hyping him up like he used to do before he unfortunately passed away, RIP Juice World. He was a big fan of Lucky's music. There's lots of old videos of him talking about Lucky. Lucky has shared some stories about Juice, but yeah, it was no secret that Juice was a big fan of Lucky as an artist. They were kind of friends toward the end of Juice's life as well, so he's a very important person in Lucky's life for a couple reasons, not only because he gave him that confidence by hyping him up as an artist, but he also had a friendship, a connection there. In fact, there's actually a pretty famous story that he linked up with Juice World. they were supposed to record music, but instead they just spent the entire studio session just hanging out, messing around, getting to know each other, and he, Lucky said after Juice passed away, he basically said, I don't regret that I didn't record with him, like yes, I wish I could have made a song with him, but I don't regret that we didn't record that day because I got to make a new friend, like I got to connect with this guy on a deep human level. I also find there's a striking amount of emotional maturity on this project that seems to find Lucky leveling up from where he has been in the past, where maybe he's been a little bit more petty or unself-aware in his lyrics. On a lot of these songs that even do have that sadness, that do focus on heartbreak, that do focus on failed relationships or women he misses who he wishes were still around, even when he dips into that bag, it just feels like he's approaching it from such a more logical and mature perspective. I'll give you an example on the song I Get It Twin, which overall to me is just one of the most harrowing and striking songs lyrically on this whole album. He's talking about a girl he's with who is cheating on him behind his back, but the song goes much deeper than that and the most interesting part to me is the fact that Lucky is basically saying like I get it 
I understand why you are cheating on me. I can't be mad. I know you're doing it because of my own flaws. I know you're doing it because I let you down. Like, I can't even be mad. And Like, I had to listen to that song. I'm not going to lie. When I was first listening to this album, I put a lot of these songs on repeat. I do that a lot with most lucky songs. Like, I'll just leave it on repeat, that one song, and just hear it a million times, just get lost in that one song. But I did it the absolute most, like... Other songs, I did it on first listen. I probably played it like five times in a row. But this one, I swear to God, I probably played it about 40 times in a row. I'm not even joking. I got so lost in this song. I was just amazed by what I was hearing. I think it's so sick. But I was listening and I was just in shock. I was like, is this the same man who on Free Wave 3 said that he was gonna like kill himself or something if his girl left him? Do you know what I mean? And obviously I love Free Wave 3. That's a whole different context and backstory. I'm just being glib here. But basically, I'm just trying to prove a point that uh, back in the day, he just was a lot more kind of the typical emo uh, perspective on his failed relationships, just like, woe is me kind of thing. Whereas on this album, he's really just taking full responsibility for who he is, his own flaws, where he has gone wrong in these relationships. And I'm just sitting here like, where the fuck did this guy come from? Who is this lucky? <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's awesome to see. I'll just say from my personal perspective, it is nice sometimes to kind of feel like your favorite artists are growing with you. You know, I mean, I'm 21 now. When I first got into Lucky, I was 17, about to turn 18. So I've clearly developed a lot of emotional maturity in the past four years. And it would be kind of shitty if I was listening to Lucky now and being like, eh, like, I can't feel you as much because I've grown up a bit. And like, the way you're speaking, I don't really relate to this as much anymore. Like, I don't have to worry about that, at least so far, because... I mean, there's a clear progression in Lucky's, in my opinion, emotional maturity, at least as is showcased through the lyrics, because again, I don't know Lucky. I'm only speaking as Lucky, the artist, Lucky, the rapper, Lucky, the character. I don't even know the guy's actual name, which <laughs> I, I don't need to know it. Like, I am not the type of person who cares about an artist's personal life. I mean, as far as it relates to their music, sure. But outside of that, like... I don't need to know what his birth name is. He's lucky to me. That's all that matters. And I don't mean that to say that I don't care about him as a person. I mean, I obviously wish him well. I'm the type of person I wish everybody well. I just mean I'm not like a stan when it comes to this stuff. So I'm not like, I know exactly the day he was born. I know the street he was born on. I know his 16 middle names. No, like I'm, that's just not me. But anyways, I completely lost my train of thought. This is not relevant. I forget what I was talking about. Ah, yes, the emotional maturity. Let's get back to that. So another example of that on this album that... I think is really uh, heartfelt and touching is on Coincidence, which was one of the singles, which is in contention for my favorite song on this project. On the chorus, when he says, uh, came to my hood and now she a part of me, just that part, like that one line, like just sticks with me, just is absolutely engraved in me. And there's deeper context in the song, but really what the context is is that you know he's talking about a girl he cares for who he's missing and it's not a girl that he's with at the time it's clearly a past lover or you know he's obviously still in love with her but they're not together but he feels so at peace with them not being together it feels like he just is grateful for what it gave him and for the parts of her that she instilled in him and he's able to just take that and move forward. Just take the positives and move forward. And again, this is just not something that, even on his album last year, Wake Up Lucky, which was a heavy, heavy breakup album, right? Like, and again, I love the shit out of that album. It was my favorite album of last year. Um, and, you know, there is something to say. I don't feel like he was emotionally immature on that project. It was more so that project was replicating what it's like to be in the throes of a breakup, to just be having heartbreak pouring out of you to not even be able to go to sleep or close your eyes without seeing this person like just kind of being haunted by this past love like that's more what wake up lucky is whereas on this album on this song here coincidence he's not haunted by this girl he's just grateful that she was in his life thankful for her and is able to move on and i'm just like i i didn't think i'd see the day like it, it makes me really it makes me genuinely really happy because that's just an awesome feeling, you know? I'm sure lots of you guys out there have had your own ups and downs in your love life. And if you've gone through something like that, a breakup that is excruciating, is painful, that has you down bad for a long time, and then finally one day, even though you may still care about them and miss them, you're able to just say, yeah, I miss them a lot, but I appreciate the time they gave me. I'm thankful I got to know them the way I did. They'll always be a part of me, and I can go on with my day.
and I, it's just such a beautiful thing. And again, to just see that replicated uh, in one of my favorite artists' music in such a beautiful way musically as well, that just hits the soul. You gotta love it, at least I do. And then there's the extra layer for that line too, because he says she came to his hood and now she's a part of him, but you have to wonder where the hood comes in, because it's not just about him. And so there it feels like, you know, this was someone special enough basically to take home to meet his family, or in his case, take back to meet the whole hood maybe, I don't know. But either way, just that expression of the idea that when you bring someone that you love and care about, you know, into your own family, right? Like, you finally bring your girlfriend to meet your parents, and then she starts coming over for dinner more often, you meet her parents, you know, etc., etc. Every relationship's different, not everyone has great relationships with their parents, I know, but I'm just talking about, in general, the notion of bringing your significant other to meet people who are special to you, whether it's your parents, extended family, your friends, your hood, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. But just the idea of that action of bridging these two worlds between your family, whether that is by blood or by choice, uh, with your significant other, the idea that once that action has happened, once those worlds had met, it ingrains that person into you on a whole new level. I mean, my ex-girlfriend, for example, no bad blood with her, but you know, she was around my family all the time. Uh, she was spending a lot of time with us and it's almost like they become part of your family in that way. The bond grows deeper than just the intimate relationship connection you have with them. It's almost like they then become uh, a blood relative to you, even though they're obviously not, right? And so even though now me and her have been broken up for some time, like to my uncle, to my nan, to my sister, to my mom, she still feels like family, you know what I mean? So. I know I've spent about five minutes talking about that one line on the chorus in Coincidence, came to my hood and now she a part of me. But the reason I did that is because I want you guys to understand just how much there is lyrically in this album. It is a lyrically dense album and I don't think enough people who aren't already big Lucky fans are gonna appreciate it for that. I didn't wanna have to reference this, I wanted to have my own video separate from this, but just a quick reference is the fact that, yes, I'm recording this after Anthony Fantano dropped his one out of 10 review for this album. Not really surprising if you know uh, what Anthony's been saying a lot about this style of underground rap in the past year, so I, you know, I'll power to him, but what I will say is that in that review, what irked me the most was, first of all, how he just kind of completely dismisses Lucky's entire career and history as if it means nothing, even though he's a decade deep into the game. Thought that was kind of just, you know, kind of rude or whatever, just not respectful. And then it was the part that he literally doesn't touch on the lyrics at all. He completely just dismisses them like, yeah, they're not interesting. Like, he doesn't even try to talk about them. And... Frankly, if you're not interested in trying to look a little deeper at what Lucky is saying on this album, then yeah, you're never gonna enjoy it as much as someone like me does because there are about 200, 250 or more, seriously, like not even exaggerating, lines on this album that I could spend five to 10 minutes talking about. And I'm gonna spare you from that, okay? I could easily make this a two, three, seven hour review if I wanted to. This thing is 24 tracks long. 24 tracks long of gorgeous beats, detailed production, slick flows, creative rhyme patterns, interesting song topics. I mean, there's just too much going on on this album for me to talk about it in the full depth that I want because I literally want to break it down and analyze it piece by piece. I want to start with Made My Day, analyze that intro, that little two second intro. We would like to congratulate Drugs for winning the war on drugs. Wrist don't talk to him, slime. Hey, hey, you know? I want to analyze every piece. I want to analyze that sample. I want to analyze the ad libs. I want to analyze everything, you know, and I could because when I listen to this thing, which I have been doing a ton, it's been out less than a week. It's already by far my most played album of the year. And those numbers will only continue to grow because as soon as I turn off this camera, I'm going to listen to it three or four more times again. Okay. When I'm listening to this thing, I'm paying attention to every detail. I'm analyzing every bit and it's there, okay? The substance is there. The depth is there. It's all there. You just have to care. You just have to want to look for it. And you just have to have some level of familiarity with Lucky's other music, at least to enjoy it to its fullest extent. I do think you can come in fresh and just start here. I think this is not at all a bad starter project for Lucky if you want to try to get into him. But just like any artist, really, you will, of course, appreciate this project more if you understand what came before it, if you've witnessed Lucky's progression as a musician, as a rapper, as a lyricist. And I will point out, too, for those of you 
who don't know it, unlike most of his peers in this kind of rap lane, Lucky does write his bars. Lucky does write his lyrics before he records. You know, he's not freestyling. He's not thinking of it in his head and remembering it like Lil Wayne or Jay-Z does, right? Like he writes, he's old school with it, you know, pen and pad, or maybe fingers to notes app. Either way, <laughs> he's, he's still writing it. He's still putting a lot of thought into what comes out of his mouth. So again, just when people like Fantano, but not just him, anybody, when people just kind of dismiss all Lucky's lyrics as not even being worth reading into, as just being lazy or repetitive, like no. Like, yeah, he has a lot of common themes, talks about drug abuse a lot, talks about heartbreak and women a lot, talks about fast cars, a lot, talks about depression and his demons and anxiety a lot. Yeah, he talks about similar things a lot, but he doesn't talk about them in the same way. Like I said, there's been a clear emotional progression in his own music, and then even on this album, there's 24 songs, like I said. I think there's at least 14 of 15 of them that have distinct subject matters, distinct topics that are easy to pick out and make them stand out from the rest of the album. But yeah, man, Lucky is an OG. It's really awesome to see him shine. Even the fact that he has a song on this album with his own self-proclaimed idol, Future, that's just such a beautiful moment. I mean, imagine grinding your ass off in the music industry, in the rap industry for 10 years, grinding your ass off, never letting up, no matter how much people beat you down. And I mean, if you really wanna go back and read Lucky's whole story, like the dude has been through some crazy shit. He could have easily given up at any point or had something unfortunate happen to him for him to not be here for this moment. The fact that he grinded his ass through some really fucking horrible, shitty ass time a really tough ass decade to finally get to this point where he's at. I mean, it's beautiful. It's inspiring. Amazing to witness as a fan. I will also say, I actually saw Lucky live this year. I went out to London. I saw him with my boys Camden and Dan. It was an amazing time, incredible show. The, the venue only fit about a thousand people, a little over, maybe about 12 to 1500. So it wasn't a huge venue, but it was packed like sardines. Everyone was in there and everyone was hype as fuck. The energy was amazing. It was one of those crowds where it was basically all diehard. So everyone was singing the words, rapping along to every word of every song. Beautiful energy, beautiful experience. And I have to say, being at that show actually kind of enhances my experience with this album as well because first of all just seeing that crowd feeling the energy understanding that two or three years ago if lucky went to london the crowd would be a third a quarter of the size and not going nearly as hard just being able to see that level of buzz excitement to feel the energy in that room with lucky on stage yeah, it was really awesome, really a great physical, vivid experience for me to understand this man's hype, how much he's grown, his popularity at the moment, that he has genuine buzz around his name, because I'm not gonna lie, when I bought tickets for that concert, I was on Twitter, I was seeing like people who live in London kind of laughing at the idea that he would sell out a show in London, and kind of saying like, huh, nobody here knows Lucky or listens to Lucky, so I was like, oh shit, like am I gonna go, and it's only gonna be half packed, and it's gonna be awkward or whatever, but my worries were completely unfair because again, like I said, it was an insane show, amazing show. But then also it made me appreciate some songs on this album more just because of the fact that he's literally talking about that show in some of these songs. I forget exactly which song it is off the top of my head because I'm ranting right now. I do all my reviews rant style. I haven't written any of this down. Maybe pretty obvious in the moments where I stumble and shit. But anyways, on one song on this project, I think it may actually also be I Get It Twin. He says something like a sold out show in London, a Stony Island jacket. And that was just crazy to me because I was just sitting there thinking like, damn, like this is the first time I've ever gone to a concert and then later heard the artist tell me what they bought with my money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this, I'm listening to this man's music. I'm like, damn, like me going to see Lucky Live, I was crowdfunding him getting a Stony Island jacket. That's crazy. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't make me enjoy the music less or more, but it just makes me feel more involved with it or more immersed, or it just gives me an extra layer that 99% of people who hear this probably won't have, which is totally fine. But I just thought that was a little funny thing. Like he mentions that show a couple more times on this album. So every time he mentions it, I'm like, oh, I was at that show. Like, that's kind of cool. Or even the song 10 PM in London. He didn't record that in London. He actually recorded it a few days before he even went overseas because he previewed it on his Instagram. So you can kind of tell by the dates, but he did come on stage at 10 PM in London. So that's probably why he called it that. So I still think that's awesome because, you know, I know that because I was at the show. So I, yeah, th that's just kind of a more fanboy moment for me, I guess, even though earlier I said I'm not a fanboy. On that level, it is kind of cool just to actually like 
for a second for a millisecond for a moment be in the actual real life world that this music is being inspired by you know what i mean like the events that are inspiring this music i was at one of those events like whoa that's sick you know <laughs> like i even thought it was cool the coincidence video that he shot with cole bennett they recorded that like not too far from where lucky did his show and i actually walked right through that area like i don't know an hour or two before the show and so i'm just here thinking now like damn they probably recorded that like not long before i walked through there so little stuff like that is kind of cool especially for someone like me who lives on a little island in the atlantic ocean and never gets to see any live shows and has to travel to see anybody but yeah there you guys have it like i said there's literally a million other things that i'm thinking in my head now like oh mention this mention that mention this mention that dissect this dissect that like i could just keep going so i have to draw the line somewhere i can see the time here i know i've been recording for a half decent while now so basically i'll give you guys the chance here to explore the album for yourselves i won't over explain it for you i guess maybe now that i'm thinking about it the last thing i did want to touch on just because of another video I saw recently, not Fantano's. This one was a reaction video to this album by, it was the first video I saw from them, so I'm not familiar with the channel, but I think it was called Chase and Rio was the name of the channel. And it was a good video. No hate on these guys whatsoever. I enjoyed their reaction to this project. But there was a moment uh, where they were listening to, again, I get it twin. I keep, why is this song so important? I don't know, maybe it is. I don't know, maybe it is. But anyways, yeah, they were listening to that song and there's another line on that song where he's like i still love you that that's a flaw you know something to that effect that's not the exact line and the guys were like oh like that's a flaw like continuity error because the whole album is supposed to be about like flawless like me basically like they were saying that that was supposed to be the theme or that's what they thought the theme was supposed to be that he's flawless you know feeling flawless i just want to say my personal input I haven't talked to Lucky about this, so this is not objective, but I do think it's a pretty interesting area of discussion in regards to this album of what the title and the cover actually signifies. But my own perspective on it is that he's not actually saying he's flawless. It's a lot more tongue in cheek and he's in fact saying the opposite, that he's very flawed. I think more so what it represents is like I was saying earlier, uh, this more emotional maturity that he has where no, he's not actually flawless. He has a lot of flaws but he's more okay with those flaws, he's more aware of them, and despite them, he still feels flawless. You know, there's a difference between being flawless and feeling flawless. And feeling flawless while also being self-aware to the fact that you're not actually flawless, in my opinion, is a pretty good way to be because it means you have a high spirit, high energy, you're a positive person, you believe in yourself, you love yourself, you're confident, but you're not an egomaniac, you're not an asshole, you don't think you're the shit, it just means you don't maybe hate yourself as much anymore. It means you're maybe not as self-deprecating and Lucky has actually talked about that in relation to this title. It was a while ago now because like I said, he's been teasing this album for three years. So this was maybe over a year ago he said this, but he basically said like, look, for someone like me who has had a lot of struggles with uh, liking myself, who has had a lot of self-hatred, who has not always liked myself, been very self-deprecating, it feels powerful to feel flawless, even though you know you're not. And just as someone who has battled depression, anxiety, that kind of stuff, it's very powerful for me as well, you know? In my own way, I've tried to come to the same place and I've been getting better at it too. I mean, I 100% am aware of the fact that I am flawed as hell, but a lot of the time I feel flawless. I feel awesome. I'm very happy with myself. I just feel great to be me, but I'm not out here shoving it in people's faces either. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just for me. And that's really how it feels to me with this Lucky album. It just feels like he's at the best place he's ever been in, but is still very aware of his vulnerabilities, of his weaknesses, of his flaws, of course. And that's why on this album, he raps about so many of them. So when he says, you know, I still love you, that's a flaw. That's not a continuity error. That's just one of the many any flaws that he talks about on this album because he talks about them a lot you know there's that line on drought ski that actually comes right after the juice line where he says i'm on three zans but i'm still alert i really got anxiety and if you know anything about xanax and what it does to someone if you are alert <laughs> and like on the go and like in your right mind off three zans i mean okay maybe you just got a high tolerance but like let's be real if you're alert, like not just like conscious, but if you're like, if you're like energetic and like on edge when you're on three Zans, bro, yeah, you really got anxiety. <laughs> like he's like, uh, that's just the other thing about Lucky's music. A lot of his lyrics are kind of inside baseball, just in the sense that if you haven't experienced or if you don't have a lot of knowledge about the world and the events and the kind of things he's talking about, 
you're not gonna love it as much as someone like me. His music is deeply personal and relatable for me. And if it wasn't, I'd probably still really like it, but it wouldn't hit me quite as deeply because a lot of these lyrics, like I said, I'm not saying this in a, oh, you wouldn't get it, bro, kind of way. I'm just being plain faced. Like if you've never dealt with drug addiction, if you've never dealt with depression, if you've never dealt with anxiety, you just, you're not gonna understand some of the things he says. It's like, it's like me listening to Be the Cowboy by Mitski. That's one of my favorite albums ever. I think it's a perfect album. I can heavily empathize with and relate to some of what she's saying, but I'm also self-aware enough to know that I will never actually fully understand everything she's saying. There's probably a lot that I'm missing within her lyrics because I'm not a woman. That album is very specifically written from the viewpoint of a woman. A man could have never written that album, not even in a sexist way, just in a literal way the same way that frankly let's say someone like future or even lucky i don't think a woman could make some of these songs just because they've gone through very masculine experiences and i'm not saying that again in some kind of old school conservative right wing way i'm just being very literal like this the way that we all acknowledge there's things that women have to go through that men don't the same is true of the reverse it's not a competition this is not the oppression olympics that's not the point i'm making hopefully you all get what i'm trying to say anyways basically what i'm saying is when you have experience something it just lets you into a different level of understanding and knowledge of someone who hasn't experienced it and you're not being an asshole by saying to someone hey you might not understand this music as much as me if you haven't dealt with depression and drug addiction like that's just how life is and it's true for any artist and I'm not at all saying that if you haven't dealt with those things that you won't enjoy his music because that's not true at all either I have a lot of friends who really like Lucky's music and to my knowledge <laughs> if they're telling me the truth about their life stories They've never touched drugs in their lives. They haven't dealt with, you know, hardcore depression uh, and stuff like that. Basically, the point here is this album is fantastic. I love it. Probably my favorite album of the year. Lyrically, I think it's brilliant, genius. I think that is the number one selling point, even though I think everything is great on this album. I think it is Lucky's writing his lyrics. That is just the utmost, most brilliant, important part. The reason why... He's one of my favorite artists, the reason why this will probably be my favorite album of the year. Next, I have to say, even though I haven't talked about it much in this video, the production is fucking insane. It's amazing, it's incredible, every beat is rich, layered, substantive, every beat creates its own world. There are absolutely no throwaway beats. Lucky has one of the best ears for beats in rap. That's been true for the last three or four years now, maybe even five or six years. So yeah, beats, I didn't dive into them because frankly, I'm not a producer. I am a lot better, I find, at talking about uh, lyric stuff, like conceptual stuff, breaking down words. Uh, someone like my friend Camden Vale Smith, who is an incredible electronic music producer, he's someone to go to to break down a beat like I would never be able to. But I do know enough to tell you that these beats are fucking fire as hell and that's all I really care about they suit Lucky's more monotone delivery and kind of nasally voice really well that's another thing god I could really talk about this album forever but one of the areas in my opinion that you see Lucky's experience and his 10 years in the game shine the most is when it comes to his delivery and how he has learned to ride a beat in this super intoxicating way where he is super low in the mix and blends into the beat but where his words still matter most rappers who blend into the beat with their delivery it's because their words don't matter so they can be really as faded into the beat as they want and you're more so just listening to them for a presence lucky does that but he also keeps them to the forefront enough and does his own unique thing with them because his words do matter he wants you to hear his words he spends a lot of time on his words and they are the focus like i said in my opinion of his music a lot of the time so the way he has really learned to just exist in a beat like this while still making his words count I can't really compare it to anything, frankly, in modern rap. I don't really think there's a comparison, and I think if you show one to me, they're probably inspired by Lucky on some level, frankly. This guy just occupies a really unique space in rap right now. I absolutely love it. The very final statement I'll make here is that if you do listen to Lucky's music at first and you kind of are like, what the hell is David talking about? This is so average. This is so boring. Like, this is just meh, which is something I've seen a lot in terms of the reaction to this album for people who may not be familiar with Lucky. I will just say, yeah, it may not be for you. That's okay. I would just say, give it more than one try if that is your initial reaction, because it has been a very common thing that I've seen in people where at first they hear Lucky and they're just kind of put off by his voice. They're put off by the pretty uh, deadpan nature of his delivery. They're put off by it and they kind of just think he sounds the same on every song type of thing. I'll just say give it a few more listens 
and over time it might start to reveal to you uh, that he's actually a pretty charismatic and engaging performer that he actually has a lot of tiny idiosyncrasies that make all his verses very different but i can understand why they might sound samey if you don't listen to a lot of his music and if you do give him a couple tries and he's still not your cup of tea hey that's how music is I'm not going to love everything you love, you're not going to love everything I love, and that's okay, as long as at the end of the day you're respectful about it. That's what music is about. So thank you guys, as always, for watching. Would love to hear your guys' opinion on this album and how are you feeling about it? Has it lived up to your hype? Have you been a lucky fan for very long? Is this your first experience with him? Let me know all that down in the comments below. Thank you guys again, as always, for watching, and I'll see you next time.